Jason Camisa is wrong. Whew, feels good to say that. Hey guys, James here and welcome back to my garage. Jason Camisa is awesome. He's definitely one of my automotive journalism icons, right? I love his work. This week though, he posted a video uh, explaining very convincingly the fact that coefficient of drag has absolutely, absolutely, absolutely nothing to do with size. And he's wrong. I completely agree with Jason Camisa that most people kind of mix up all these concepts and they think that, well, if you hold everything constant, meaning the shape of a car constant, but you just make it bigger, uh, then the coefficient of drag increases accordingly. And that's simply not true. And Jason is correct for pointing that out. But here's where Jason's not quite right. Size does actually affect the coefficient of drag. And let me explain why. To understand why size actually does affect coefficient of drag, we actually have to get to know something called the Reynolds number. When an object moves through a fluid, like a car moving through the air, there are basically two types of forces that can hold it back. One is inertial forces and the other is viscous forces. And as you scale up or scale down the size of the object that's moving through the fluid, the inertial forces and the viscous forces don't actually scale up and down accordingly. They don't scale up in the same way. So the ratio between those two types of forces will actually change. And the Reynolds number is the ratio of the inertial forces over the viscous forces. Experiments have confirmed that if you take a given shape, let's say spheres, and you test different sizes of sphere, they will actually produce different Reynolds numbers and different coefficients of drag. So you can see from this graph that in general, the lower your Reynolds number, the higher your coefficient of drag. And the higher your Reynolds number, the lower your coefficient of drag with some weird bumps along the way. And we don't need to talk about why those bumps occur on the graph. Uh, that's all we need to know from this is that coefficient of drag is in fact affected by the Reynolds number. Let's put this all together. Size affects the Reynolds number and the Reynolds number affects your coefficient of drag. Therefore, size actually does affect the coefficient of drag. In very technical terms then, Jason Camisa is wrong when he says that size has quote, nothing to do with coefficient of drag, but he is actually approximately correct. And here's why. Let me put up that graph again that shows the relationship between the Reynolds number and the coefficient of drag. There's a range where if you change the Reynolds number, the coefficient of drag doesn't actually change that much. And cars happen to be in that range where the coefficient of drag is not affected much by the Reynolds number. So as a result, if you have a given shape of car and you change the size, in other words, just scale it up or scale it down, you would in fact change the Reynolds number, but the Reynolds number is in a range where it doesn't change the coefficient of drag very much. So the link between the size of the vehicle and the coefficient of drag is quite minimal. And although it's not zero, we can basically call it zero for engineering purposes and for purposes of just discussing like which cars are more aerodynamic than others and what would happen if we scaled them up or scaled them down. I know this is super nerdy and super nitpicky, but this is what happens when you have a guy like me who's really into cars and has a science background from college and a law degree. Basically, I saw Jason Camisa's video and I was like, mm, I don't know, this isn't quite right. And I just felt compelled to uh, make this video to set the record straight. So there you go. Thanks for watching until the end. Thanks for humoring me through this nerdy, like walk through the forest. If you like this video, if you found it interesting, hit that like button down below. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. I have a whole bunch of more interesting content coming out the pipeline, so hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any of it. Again, my name is James. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.